don't miss any content, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Hey guys, welcome back to Sahara Football. I hope you enjoyed your weekend. It was a dull weekend, obviously, without football, but we know the times we are in. As usual, I am your host, Selassie Shawi. Today, we're going to listen to an interview from a Samoa Jan. Yes, he was involved in an interview with Ace a Ghanaian journalist, Kabnaye Boy, and he was talking about the time in 2010 when he missed that eventual penalty. So many people saw that picture of a Stephen Appiah talking to him with some stern, what looked like some stern words. He revealed what Stephen Appiah revealed to him, it said to him actually, and we all got it wrong in the end. Also, he talks about his desire to play for Kotoko and his desire to coach in the Black Stars. He also talks about his regrets as a Black Stars player and his career, why he moved from Sunderland. Many people found it really curious that he left the Premier League for Al Ain. He talks about all that in the interview we'll go have a listen to the interview that took place last night as usual if you're new to the channel i advise you to subscribe to the channel and to click on the notification bell to get more updates let's go have a look listen to that interview maybe get a samoa jan on his career and his achievements and everything about him so far this is highly commendable we will start with your career as a footballer I mean, you came to the limelight playing for Liberty Professionals. Can you tell us which teams you played for before Liberty Professionals and live from Liberty for your first um, professional contract out? Okay, um, from the coast level, I played for um, Mighty Victory, right. and then Mighty Victory had problems, so the team the team has to be divided into two. Okay. So um, they formed another team called CDAPS. Right. We started from the B to the, and then we were able to qualify. And then um, that was when um, Liberty Professionals um, introduced the academy side, you know, so I had to join the academy, although I was playing for the coast level, but the academy, we do travel, play games and stuff, so um, we don't use cards to play, we just um, gather the boys and them. So I was also in the um, Liberty team. Um, because of Slytete, he was managing my brother. You know, so automatically, I took Slytete as my manager. Just like that. it wasn't on paper. Slytete was one of the founders and band rulers of the team. Yes, uh, may his story in peace. Absolutely. He has done a lot in, for, 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 for Ghana. He's yeah. done a lot in Ghana football. A lot of great, great players, legends. You know, he's, he's produced a lot of um, um, players. So um, I, I took it upon myself. Like automatically, he was managing my brother. So I always call him manager. You know, so. I was playing um, in the um, academy till um, John Satukwis. John Satukwis was appointed as the um, head coach um, of Liberty Professional. So I think one day he was um, uh, passing through. You know, um, from our field, you have to pass through our field before you go to the where the senior side trains. So um, he saw me training with the um, second team, which is the academy, yeah. and then um, he stopped. Sometimes he stops and watches training. So he saw me playing and then he told Sly, um, I think I like um, this guy. And uh, and I remember Sly told him, this is the junior brother of Bafoja. I see. And he, he, told, he told him uh, he's going to be better than Bafoja. I just want him in the first thing. So that was how I, was, I, I got promoted. So that year I was promoted with uh, Michael Elebe. Okay. That time. So got promoted and then... Um, it was around the um, 2003 top four, mm -hmm. no 2002 top four. Okay. You know, I hadn't played in the Premier League before. You know, so they were preparing for the top four at that time. You know, so I had to join the team. So he, I was part of the 22 um, team. So I remember we played <laughs> the first game against Akasu Folk. We lost okay. uh, by two goals to um, Neo. And I think the last stages of the game. Just to give you saw me on the bench and he told me, hey, go there. I want you to do, I had one particular skill I was doing at training. All right. He said, okay, we've lost the game. Just go on the field, exhibit that skills for me. Okay. Don't look at anything, don't feel any pressure. Just enjoy yourself. So I went there, I was able to do it and it was a success. All right. Although I played like 10 minutes of the game, I was causing problems for the house defense, but it was too late. Right. So we, we lost the game. So how long did you play for Liberty Professional? Okay, I played um, for just one season. Season. Um, that was the 2003 season. You know, after the um, top four, um, the season started 
in uh, in 2003. And you went straight to Denise? Um, during that time, I was going on trials. Okay. You know, I went on trials. So I played a couple of games, went on trials, and then um, during in, in 2003. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went on trials, and then the it was a success. Okay. You know, so they wanted to sign me there and stay. But I felt like, okay, I had, I had a mission to accomplish, you know, so I decided to come back to Ghana, finish the league, and then um, go, go, go and continue my um, international football career. So I started, I, I, I arrived in Italy in January 2004. And, and you played for Udinese? Yeah, I played for Udinese. Then you moved on to Modena? Modena. So um, I signed for four years contract, I signed five years contract for Udinese. From January to uh, May, was like the second round of the um, league. That was when I started. I didn't have um, playing time, okay. you know. So I, I played just one game. Okay. So I joined the national team, the Black Meteors, who went to the Athens Olympic Games in 2004. So it was a it, it was a good tournament for me. So I felt like um, I want to play, you know. So they had to loan me okay. to Modena right. in, in 2004. But it looks like your breakthrough in Europe was with Ren. Is that right? Yes, um, although I, I really enjoyed um, my time in Modena. Mm-hmm. But I came back to Udinese okay. um, in 2008. It was a good season for me. Right. You know, that was when um, Ren, Ren signed me. So I played just one full season for, for Udinese after my loan deal. Right. And then um, I had to uh, go to Ren. Yeah. Hugely successful. And then from there, you were caught by Sunderland. Brilliant season with Sunderland and then from Sunderland you decided to go to the Arab world you know a lot of people have questioned mm. why anybody could leave the premiership and go to the Arab world because normally you would expect that when people are in the twilight of their career before they move to uh, the Arab world especially against the background that when you were playing for Sunderland hugely successful and most of the top teams in the EPL were chasing you. We know that our team, big teams like Liverpool, were all chasing your signature. So why would you opt for Alain? Um, okay, um, like uh, um, as, as we all know, now when a team is performing, definitely clubs will be looking for your signature. Okay. You know, um, but the concrete one, the one which was on the table at that time was um, the club from UAE. Okay. You know, which honestly, um, I felt like as a normal thing, you know. I, I remember I was there, and then um, the officials, like the Sunderland, they called me in the night. They told me, "You have a deal. Okay. This is the deal. Um, it's a loan deal. You know. So it, the, the deal was like six million uh, for just one season. And then, uh, and I asked the question, and they were they were like, "Okay, we know you can just go there and then do your thing, and then um, go for one season and then come." And that time I was on top of my game. Um, I was the max man in the team, you know, I was, because Darren Bent had left to um, Aston Villa at that time. So I was the only striker they were depending on, you know. So the question I asked them was like, what about the fans? Like, how, do everybody understand this move? And they were like, yeah, we know how to deal with the fans, you know. So, so I, I said to myself, I felt like, uh, okay. So they were thinking about the profit they're going to make because I was going for just one season for six million pounds, you know. So. Um, I was asking myself questions, and I said, okay, you know what, give me my personal terms, let me see. So I saw my personal terms, it was a very, very good deal, right. you know, which I will not deny, it's huge money, yeah. which I felt like, okay, my personal term was good, but I didn't even focus on that. I was still insisting that I did okay for me to move. They, it, it was like they were even pushing for that move because of the money involved. You know, so I had no option because personally my, my, my move was okay. My, my personal terms was okay. So I called my family, I called my friends, I called Sami and Imad, everybody, everybody was like, why not the situation? If they understand what you, you, you want to do, then why not go there and play for one season? So I went there, I fell in love with the place. I went there, as, I was the top scorer in my first season. Everybody, everything was right. You know, the, the people there, everything, they, an atmosphere, I felt so great, like I felt very, very good in my spirit, like everything was good. Yeah. And in, in it was, and in that deal, the player had to decide if he wants to stay or not. If the player wants to stay, then the UAE team will add another 4 million, making it 10 million. So when I saw it, I was like, 
I fell in love with this place, so right. I will stay. So with the benefit of hindsight, you believe that you made the right move? For me, yeah, I made yeah, the right move. That's right. I, read, I made the right move. I, don't, I always say I don't regret it at all. all right. Now you in India. What is John doing right now? And uh, what are the plans, your footballing plan, plans right now for the future? Um, right now, um, the season is over. Okay. You know, um, I had um, um, a year with option with the, with the Indian club. You know, we, we finished the league. You know, um, I had an injury in January during New Year, like as we entered the New Year. I had an injury, and the, the, the season finishes on the 25th of February. So, and my injury was supposed to take like eight weeks, which would have been the end of the season anyway. So I, I told the team, um, I want to come home and then um, treat myself, do the rehabilitation in Ghana. Okay. And then, um, yeah, for, so, and uh, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, the COVID-19 happened. So uh, we stuck in Ghana, yeah. and then I'm now okay. So um, uh, I felt like I, I assessed my body, and I felt like I've added a bit of weight, you know, so I have to just work on my weight to get back to my shape, and then um, foot, football continues. Right. Are we going to see John play for the next two, three years? Definitely. Right. Definitely. I, I feel good in my body. You know, um, when, I, when I was injured, like, I, I, I always enjoyed playing tennis. You know, I'm, I'm a new tennis player, you know, so I love the sports also. So, Do you remember your first game? Which year? What happened in that particular game? Yeah, I remember my first game. It was against Somalia in the uh, Adakar Sports Stadium in 2003. Okay. I was a player of Liberty. Um, great moment. A great moment at that time. Um, I think I, I... Ghana was leading like 4-0. And then I, I got in in somewhere 78 minutes around that time. You know, um, there was a ball from um, Abukar Yakubu, may so rest in peace. Um, he was trying to... The guy was playing for Ajax at that time. He was playing at that time. Right. There was a ball from him, controlled. He was trying to shoot, okay. you know, so I had to use my instincts. I felt like I had to follow the ball. So he shot the ball and then the ball was going wide. So I was there and then I, I touched with my head. That's right. And then I made it five. <laughs> and, and, and that was the beginning of great things to come. 51 goals for the national. Nobody scored it. How does he feel being the top scorer of all time for the senior national team? I feel sometimes I sit down and uh, um, I assess things and uh, God, because it hasn't been an easy journey. Um, and also, secondly, I always say, even when I was little, everywhere I go, I stand out. You know, and I also see like it's something part of me. You know, um, one thing about me is I'm very, very confident. Okay. You know, starting from the coast level, being the top scorer in the coast level. I think I've I've, I've broken a record in in coast scoring 42 goals in a season. Okay. You know, I don't think the, anybody has broken that record till now. Okay. Coming to stay cool professionals, you know, um, I was the first group to qualify stay cool ever okay. to the Premier League. You know, in Liberty, I was the top scorer in the team. I although I was in the top scorer. In the Ghana Premier League, and I always say to my people, I would have been the top scorer <laughs> if I didn't go for these trials, leaving the league, and then going back and forth. So I think goal scoring has been um, part of me, yeah. you know. So me being here right now with 51 goals, I always thank God for that. And secondly, I feel like it's, it's been part of me, so it's a normal thing. Let's fast forward to 2010, mm -hmm. where you blazed the trail of Senegal, uh, Cameroon, getting to the quarterfinal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fantastic performance. Then the game against Uruguay. Mm. I'm sure you've been asked this question a billion times. Mm. It's very uncomfortable asking that question. But that game against Uruguay, you played so well, mm. and then that penalty, does it still haunt you? <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Oh, I, see. I think it's, it's, it will haunt me to the rest of my life because um, I always ask myself, I always ask God, <laughs> God, does <just> rewind. <laughs> The world so that I can have the opportunity. <laughs> give. Yeah, I can take the opportunity. Like, because um, at that time, you know, I was the first penalty taker of the team. Um, first game against Serbia, I scored. Um, second game against Australia, I scored through a penalty. Uh, third game, I didn't score. I scored in, um, against uh, America. So um, I remember a day before the game, you know, I was taking penalty penalty kicks. I think against uh, Kingston, I shot uh, around like 20 balls. I scored in every, like, every kick I took, you know. And um, after I, I went to the room and I asked myself, whoa, 
what if tomorrow there is a penalty? Okay. You know, our uh, this superstition thing like, okay. hey, <laughs> machine goes in, I've scored all the goals here. <laughs> so what if there is a penalty? So I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I just, I was just contemplating, like talking to myself. So when the penalty came, I was like, this is it. Show who you are. So there was not any pressure on me because I already scored all the two games to do a penalty. So I was like, yeah, let's let me place the ball and then do what I do best. Mm. You know, and the, the amazing thing is like my penalty hasn't gone that high before. All my penalty has has been just ground and then you know medium. Okay. You know, but my penalty hasn't gone that high. That was what I was surprised. So I just told myself, okay. Maybe it was meant to be, you know. Um, if you could remember Robert Ju, uh, Roberto Baju had yeah, yeah. he kicked that high. That's right. He was also like me, like That's kicking right. very low. But when he made the penalty, he, he pulled it that high. So I was like, I don't understand, but it's, it's meant to be. Sometimes people might, th- might think there was pressure, okay. you know. Yeah. Although there was pressure at that time, but I had to. I kept my composure. Yeah to score like a normal player scoring a goal, a normal striker scoring a goal, but it's not unfortunate. I'm not perfect, I made mistakes, and um, it happened. Yeah, you know, uh, there's been a conspiracy theory, I don't know how to put it, but that when you pick the ball, Cyril Napier came and tried to demand the ball from you. We had the opportunity of speaking to uh, Stephen Napier, and uh, he indicated that the idea was not to um, take the ball away from you. Can you talk us through that? <laughs> you know, uh, there was a caption like um, Stephen like throwing a string. That, that, that caption, mm. I think people got it right there because that is how it looked yeah. like with, with his uh, with finger pointing at, at me. And uh, the, the interpretation was that uh, he was warning you. Yes. Okay. I don't. I don't blame people right. in that aspect. You know, but that was that picture was after I missed the penalty. Okay. You know, I missed it like a minute or a second to the end of. After I missed the penalty, the referee whistled to the end. So we were going to the penalty shootout. So I was worried, standing there. So he came and told me, listen, you are the best penalty taker in the team. Don't even dare. You are going to take it, show to everybody who you are. I believe in you. So he was motivating, he he was even motivating me, you know. So I was worried and I was like, so he was motivating me. He was like, hey, go there, show people who you are because he's a motivator, you know. So I took it upon myself. I was like, yeah. I would do it. Yeah. So that was how I got there, yeah. took it and I scored. And also, I'm very, very strong mentally. You know, um, I always tell people, if I hadn't taken that penalty, that would have been the end of me. Yeah. Because right. it really hit me, like, I was very, very down. You, to be calm, have you overcome it finally, and uh, your relationship with the uh, Kwesi? Uh, yeah, um, life goes on. I've overcome it, like, I'm, I'm happy, mm. as usual, you know. Uh, but at that time, I felt the decision wasn't right. The timing wasn't right. You know, um, I'm a human being. You know, I'm, I'm always sensitive sometimes. You know, I had to react. And uh, honestly, my relationship with Kwesi hasn't been, been like before. We haven't spoken on phone since. You know, but when time we see each other, it's, it's, it's normal. We, there's no any hatred or something with me. But we haven't spoken on phone like we used to before you know but as I, what, what i would say is the timing was very very wrong the timing the timing was very very wrong at that time right. and i'm sure i'm very very sure he regrets it right. i'm very sure we were about to make mistakes right. and i know in his heart that he knows he has made he has made a big mistake anyway uh, and not know. not to disrespect um, right. the current captain right. okay. but i'm talking about the, the decision the right. decision he took mm-hmm. You know, um, and Andre is, is also a good leader. He's, he's a motivator. He's a, he's a very good somebody. I've, I've been with him. I know he also commands respect and everything. Okay. But I'm talking about the th- decision that was taken. It wasn't the right time to take that decision. All right. What do you on the current national team? With a new FA, with a new um, coach, Sikakuro, mm. and with quite a number of new boys in the team? Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's all about generation. It's, it's, a, it's a new generation. We've got a, a new coach yeah. who's a very, very good coach. CK, I watched CK, um, although I saw him in the local scene, I didn't see the kind of tactics he plays. Okay. You know, I see him coaching. So I saw him, like, closely, 
when uh, Kumasi Asante got to complete against the Blasters, uh, Kumasi Asante, um, the Babaya uh, Sports Stadium, I, I was there and I, I saw his tactics and I was like, whoa. I even spoke to him, I said, tactically, you are, you, are, you are very good. So me seeing him in the national team, it's, it's not a surprise to me at all because he, he knows what he's doing. He's a good coach. Um, I appeal to all Ghanaians to, to support him, achieve what he wants to achieve. You know, any decision he, he takes, um, he should support it because at the end of the day, if he gets things wrong, he'll be criticized. So we should allow him to do his job, you know. So that's the only thing I can see. And the kind of players we have right now, young players, hungry, those coming up, they want to prove a point, you know. Maybe they can also break, break the jinx, you know. So we all have to support them. What next after football? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, I'm planning to get a license, a coaching license, because I'm, I still have passion in the game. You know, um, I have the IQ. I, I can sit down and then assess things. Um, a lot of, there are a lot of coaches who have told me uh, you can be a very good coach. And me being a coach doesn't mean I won't focus on other things, you know. But at least it might, it might happen. I, I might never get into football again. You know, it, it might happen I can be in the, in the game till, till, you know. So um, I want to be in a game, um, honestly. So I'm, I'm planning to get um, a FIFA license, a coaching license, just to be in the game. No, I understand. Um, although people know me as a businessman outside the game, but I still want to be in the game. For some time now, we've heard the news about the obsession with Asante Kotoko. Is there still a desire that you want to chase? Yeah, Kotoko has been uh, my team since since I was a kid. You know, I've been su supporting the club um, since I was a kid. You know, and um, yeah, I've, I've said it a couple of times. Um, I have to wear that red shirt. Okay. I have to wear, wear that red shirt before I call it a day. <laughs> you know, so it's still on course. All right. How soon is that going to be? Very soon. All right. Uh, very very soon. You know, and. Um, yeah, we're here. Let's see what happens. So that is it there. You heard from the man himself, Baby Jetta Samwajan. And who would have thought that was what captain of the side, uh, um, deputy captain of the side at that time, Stephen Apia, was telling him that he is the best and he's the best penalty taker. He has to take part in the shootout. Many people thought he was giving him stern words and rebuking him. But I quite didn't believe, ever believe it, and I'm sure we all know the backstory now. He's moved to Sunderland. He's moved from Sunderland to Al Ayn too. You heard it over there. He didn't want to move, but he looked at the personal terms and it was a good deal. And it looked like the club actually wanted to sell him off eventually. So really, he had very little to do with that transfer. So that has been it for today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments box on everything you heard from the interview and what you think from everything baby jetta samwajan has said enjoy your day stay safe <laughs>